Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Tanya Hamaker, and I want to welcome you to Farragut Career Academy, IB World School, home of the Admirals. I've been the proud principal here for more than 10 years, and I've had the pleasure of watching this school grow tremendously over that time. Every decision that my team has made over the past decade connects back to one mission, to prepare all of our students to become lifelong learners and the future leaders of our city and world. In order for us to meet our mission, we need projects like this new turf field to boost morale and show our students and this community that they too deserve the best. Because after all, Farragut is in the heart of Little Village and we want to be the heart of Little Village when it comes to academics and post-secondary success. We've launched an extremely successful IB program that exposes our students to challenging curricula that helps them develop their critical thinking skills and transforms them into responsible citizens. We have top-notch career and technical education programs in law and education, as well as an amazing JROTC program. And this school year, we announced our partnership with Hope Chicago, which will allow all of our students to attend college debt-free. So as you can probably guess, Today's groundbreaking is just one of the reasons it's an exciting time to be a Farragut Admiral. This turf field would not have come to fruition without the countless hours invested by our community, local school council, Enlace, and Farragut staff. I want to thank Governor Pritzker, Mayor Lightfoot, State Senator Villanueva, Alderman Cardenas, and Rodriguez, and everyone else who came out to support our school today. I'm so excited to get today's event underway, and I'd like to introduce the next speaker. It is my pleasure to introduce Alderman Rodriguez. So as a lifelong resident of Little Village, this is an absolutely wonderful day. I uh, served on a local school council here some years ago, and ever since then we knew that this turf field was really in need. Um, but more importantly, that our community was in need, in need of vital resources, in need of investments, in need of a little bit of tender love and care. Uh, before I make some remarks, I'd like to recognize a couple people. First and foremost, Principal Hammaker, I feel like we've been partners in this for the last 10 years. First of my time at Enlace and now here as alder person of this ward. I don't know how many conversations we've had, how many peaks and valleys we've had as far as this project is concerned, but today really is a peak, isn't it? Um, I, I saw my good friend Peter Garza here, and I gotta mention Pete. Um, you know, he's a graduate here of Farragut High School. He played here. Coach Gordon was his coach in the football team here, and over the last couple years, he's been the person who's been in my ear about this field and about this uh, exciting development. He's so representative of the students here, of the alumni that are here, of all those who have lived, worked, worshiped, and, 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 and sweated here at this amazing campus and school over the years. So thank you for your advocacy, brother. Thank you to the alumni for all of your advocacy. Give them a round of applause for everything they do. And what are we going on, our 30th year anniversary of our Alumni Association gathering this summer over at Douglas Park? That should be a fun time this year, huh? Um, that's right. Um, all of our elected officials, this was really a true collaboration. You know, some months ago, where my good friend, it was about a year ago, where my good friend and colleague, you know, we've known each other since our Pachowski Park days, um, Selena, Senator Selena Villanueva, who she said, Mike, Remember when you asked me for that allocation for state money? Well, we got it. Give her a round of applause for all the work that she's done to make this happen. The first investment here in the neighborhood for this great endeavor. Um, to all the advocates that are here, to Enlace Chicago, New Life, State Representative Edgar Gonzalez, who's here with us today, um, all those who fought after what happened here a little over a year ago, 100 steps from us where a young man uh, who um, 
you know, was of our community, who was killed here, not steps from here. Uh, we remember him today as well as someone who could have potentially have benefited from what we're doing here today. Uh, and I say his name, Adam Toledo. You know, violence really is driven by the poverty of the soul. What young people see around them in the buildings they walk in and the fields they play on is what they see in themselves and their future potential. These investments are feeding our young people's souls. It's not lost upon me that due to hatred, despair, and division, things like what just recently happened in Buffalo are able to occur. This will be a place where all people, young and old, black and brown, can come together, learn, and play safely. Again, I thank Senator Selena Villanueva and Mayor Lightfoot for their efforts. I'll bring up Mayor Lightfoot in a moment and have a couple comments for Mayor Lightfoot as well. But brevemente en español, mi nombre es Mike Rodriguez, soy el concejal del Sector 22. He vivido aquí en mi comunidad La Villita toda mi vida. La violencia realmente es impulsada por la pobreza del alma. Lo que los jóvenes ven a su alrededor en los edificios por los que caminan y los campos en los que juegan es lo que ven en sí mismos, en su futuro potencial. Estas inversiones están alimentando el alma de nuestros jóvenes. No se me escapa que debil, debido al oído, la desesperación, la división, pueden ocurrir cosas como lo que sucedió en Buffalo hace, hace unos uh, días. Este será un lugar, un lugar donde todas las personas, jóvenes y mayores, afroamericanos, hispanos, pueden reunirse para aprender y jugar de manera segura. Agradezco a la senadora Celina Villanueva y la alcaldesa Lightfoot por sus esfuerzos. Al senador Villanueva por inicio de esto con cuatro millones de dinero y también el gobernador J.B. Prisker. Le agradecemos mucho. Y también la alcaldesa Lightfoot por sus esfuerzos para traer muchos más recursos a esa escuela. Y no lo voy a decir lo que va a decir y anunciar la alcaldesa, pero la verdad, hoy día la quiero uh, agradecer por sus esfuerzos. It's my great pleasure to uh, bring up to the podium someone who, um, you know, if Senator Villanueva started this effort, it was Mayor Lightfoot who ended it and made this uh, possible. Not just a soccer field and a football practice field and a new roof and so many other things that are going to happen here. And I want to feel your thunder, Mayor. Uh, but I wanted to thank you, Senator Villanueva, Governor Pritzker. Once again, I can't thank you enough for your efforts, but also Mayor Lightfoot for making this a reality. Mayor, please join us. Uh, buenos dias. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. And, and thank you, Mike. Um, you said something that I want to make sure that uh, people heard, which is violence arises from a poverty of the soul. Um, I think true words could not be spoken. And we're here today to make sure that the young people of this community never feel impoverished in their soul. But what they feel instead is incredible love and support. <clears throat> I am honored to be standing here with um, so many incredible people from this community. Um, I appreciate uh, the elected officials uh, who are here, um, but I particularly also appreciate uh, the workers, the people who live in this community, who give their uh, blood, sweat, and tears uh, this, to this community and make sure that this community is strong and, and vibrant. Let me just say that in a horrible tragedy of the death of Alan, Adam Toledo, we spent a lot of time here in this community being intentional, and importantly, listening. Listening to the young people of this community in particular. And what was resoundingly clear in the various conversations that we had were a couple of things. Too many young people in this community felt isolated and alone. The safe public spaces that are taken for granted in other parts of our city, we heard from youth of this community were in short supply here. We also heard that fear and death were often constant companions of our young people. 
I remember one young man who talked to me through equal parts anger and pain that his whole young life he walked by too many murals not reflecting and celebrating beauty or art or history but memorializing the lives lost to gun violence. That's a heavy and tra traumatic burden for anyone, but particularly for our young people to bear. But I also know that this community is incredibly strong and resilient, a community that continues to express itself um, in its wonderful history and present through arts and culture, business, sports, and many other ways a community with strong, committed stakeholders and organizations, many of whom are reflected here uh, today, that every day do the Lord's work without fanfare, but with selflessness and dedication. And today, we are here to celebrate promises made, but importantly, promises delivered. Concrete, tangible investments. That's what that young man challenged me to show. Concrete tangible investments in our youth an anchor school that will redound to the benefit of this community for decades to come and i'm grateful and honored to be here with you i too want to thank uh, senator uh, villanueva for uh, really being a catalyst for making sure that all the monies that were needed i also have to thank um, cps um, ceo martinez um, and the team for when we sat at Mia Tierra and listened to the community, and one of the top things on the list was getting this project done, I, as the team at CPS will tell you, I was relentless in making sure that we push forward and got it done for the residents of this community. And I'm glad to be here uh, with principal and students and the entire community to say, we heard you and we are delivering for you. <clears throat> <laughs> it's roughly 16 million um, from CPS uh, that's set aside will be to the benefit of this entire uh, community and campus. And let me share with you some of the details. We're here to great break ground on phase one of this investment, which includes a number of exciting projects. As you heard, a new turf soccer field, a basketball court, a new scoreboard, a ball catcher netting and bleachers, a pole mounted field lighting and other infrastructure improvements. Uh, that project paid through CPS capital funds will include a new classroom, um, teaching lab and resource and study rooms for the school's new IB uh, program. The IB program was recently added um, and congratulations on that, it's a great achievement. Um, to support the district and the school's vision and I'm pleased that students taking its rigorous classes will have a new environment that supports their academic goals. And we'll hear from <coughs> one of those students um, shortly. <coughs> Once completed, <coughs> each of these investments will have a positive impact on the surrounding community of a little village as well as nurture the well-being of current and future Farragut students. I'm glad to see uh, the alumni are here. I went to school at a high school where the alumni uh, group is very strong and vibrant. It's important that we see those past students giving back and supporting the current and future students. And I just want to say the investments that we're making today uh, will redound to the future students um, when the current students are themselves uh, also alumni. All of our residents, no matter where they are, live in our city, deserve to have access to enriching open spaces to play, learn, and grow. And Little Village deserves no less. This is a glorious day for all of us. <clears throat> and I want to be clear, this is an important milestone, but it's not the end of our journey and destination. We have a lot more work to do to make sure that we are supporting this community's aspirations that are the same as every other community. To have safe spaces, great schools, and public places where families, intergeneration, can be and live and flourish. And really, I think, grasp 
um, and enjoy the greatness that is the city of Chicago. So I want to thank all the leaders that are here today uh, that continue to stand up and advocate for the needs of Little Village and this high school, staff and faculty. And this announcement truly embodiment of what is possible, what is possible when we listen, when we come together with a humble heart, and that we unite on a common sense of purpose to get things done on behalf of our residents. Now I'd like to welcome up uh, my friend and another leader uh, from this community, Alderman George Cardenas, uh, to say a few words. Alderman. Thank you. Thanks, uh, everyone. I think everybody got to be thanked uh, today. Uh, I think uh, more importantly is, is the principal, um, Hammaker, who has been at the forefront for many, many years, um, advocating for the school, asking uh, uh, folks like myself uh, and others not to forget Farragut, uh, to talk about all the positive things that Farragut has to offer in this community. And so first and foremost, it's, it's you. It's your, it's your leadership, honest to God. Um, it is. Um, I, um, when I was doing my master's in the mid 90s, um, I was here substituting uh, as a teacher um, when uh, uh, a young man, uh, Kevin Garnett and Ronnie Fields were playing and I saw them play uh, and saw their potential. So if you can take that from Farragut, what his potential could be uh, is still here today. This investment uh, is long time coming. And the investment uh, took as long as our politics of division. And in the moment, right now, it's the politics of unity that I think are getting it done. And that's what it should ha be happening day in and day out, the politics of unity. And that's everybody involved from the state, the county, the city, the park district, all the agencies that matter to serve us is when they come together as we get things done. Now, I'll say this. I can provide institutional knowledge about Little Village since I've been here almost 20 years. And I can tell you, the politics of division is what took this long. Mayor Lightfoot, when I talked to her about this particular matter and others in areas like Little Village and what momentous it could be for the community, there was no doubt about it in terms of not the when, but the how much it was going to be invested here. And I think the 16 million plus I think it could be more, but the matter, but the matter of fact that uh, when pencil, paper to pencil, was put down, it was definitely known that this great school needed that much more, that and, and much more. We've invested in Back of the Arts High School, we invested in Benira Juarez. It is now time to invest in Farragut High School. Thank you. There's, there's no MC. Uh, Jimena, no, I'm sorry, Jimena Torres, freshman at Farragut High School, seat of Chicago, uh, followed by the Chief Education Officer, um, Bogdana Chikumboa. Okay? And then Selena, uh, our Senator of the District, and then Pat Dimitel. is Jimena Torres, and I am here today to speak with you as a representative of Farragut's student body. I would like to start by thanking Mayor Lightfoot and Senator Villanueva for funding the new field. I can assure you that it is money well spent. I think we can all collectively agree that any money spent on our city's youth is money well spent. I am confident in saying that students here at Farragut will put the field to good use. Your money has given students a new opportunity, one which, when used correctly, will keep kids off the street. It is important to continue investing in our children's futures, to use our money for prevention rather than reaction. And the new field is an excellent example of that. As a student here at Farragut, my excitement is astronomical. One of the things that I love the most about Farragut is its boundless opportunities. The only limits that Farragut students have are those that they set for themselves. The new field will be another opportunity for students of all walks of life to spend time outside and exercise. Some may even discover a love for soccer that can change the entire trajectory of their lives. Or 
simply have fun with their friends, engaging in a sport that they wouldn't usually. Not to mention that the new field will also benefit the Little Village community in general. By working together with our elected officials, we can continue to do amazing things and provide our community with the resources needed for success. I think we can all agree a continued relationship between the city and the Little Village community will be mutually beneficial and you will see the gain in investing in our youth. Once again, we thank you for our contribution to our community. Together, we can work to achieve amazing things, not just here, but all around the city. Thank you, Jimena. So glad to speak after you. It's always exciting to hear from our students because this is really an investment in your uh, future. So good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Bogdana Shkumbuva, Chief Education Officer for Chicago Public Schools. It is great to be in the Little Village community today with all of you. I also want to start thanking Principal Hanneker, her leadership team, and the entire teaching staff here at Farragut High School for taking huge steps forward in uh, providing a challenging curriculum for all of our students and encouraging them to pursue post-secondary opportunities and pathways that connect with their interests and with their passions. Today, we've come together to officially break ground on a new turf field and running track, along with new lighting and a new scoreboard for the Farragut community. In addition, it is worth repeating, Farragut will also receive a full roof replacement, a new law classroom, new law classroom to really support the new program uh, efforts here at the school, a teaching lab, International Baccalaureate Resource Center, a study room to also support the IB program, and in addition, uh, the building will have various updates to make it more accessible. This was truly a team effort, and I will also want to send my thanks, first and foremost, to State Senator Villanueva, Governor Pritzker, for providing the funding to make this project a reality. I also want to thank Mayor Lightfoot for taking it to the finish line and enhancing the project and also Alderman Cardenas, Alderman Rodriguez, for their leadership and continued support and advocacy on behalf of the Farragut community, on behalf of the schools in Little Village, and also throughout the city. And of course, our district is really invested in what goes, out, goes on inside our classrooms. But we also know that what happens outside of the classrooms is equally important for our students. We know that sports help students to stay focused academically, but we also know that sports help students build positive relationships with each other and the adults around them. So as Chief Education Officer, I am committed to work closely with CEO Martinez to provide our student athletes with access to high quality facilities and also other resources to help them develop not only their athletic talents, but also their teamwork and leadership skills. This investment will be huge for Farragut students and staff, but the impact of the investments will go far beyond this one school. The entire Little Village community will benefit from this space, and I'm looking forward to seeing how time spent here will bring new friendships and will also bring neighbors together. But this is not all there will be a phase two of this project. Our work to make Farragut's facilities rival those of any other high school in the city will not stop with just the field. Yeah. CPS will proudly fund the second part of this project, a community area that will be built adjacent to the soccer field that will include a basketball court, the students told me earlier that they also have basketball teams, <laughs> press box, and restrooms. We are fully committed to continuing to invest in Farragut so that this school community can try for generations to come. And we will continue to work with Mayor Lightfoot, 
Alderman Rodriguez and State Representative Villanueva to ensure that these developments reflect the vision for this surrounding community, the Little Village community. I can't wait to watch the field begin to shape in the months ahead, and I hope to be back at Farragut so sooner than later to see games on the field taking place. So go Admirals. <laughs> Thank you all for being here today. And now I would, uh, would like to invite uh, Senator Villanueva to speak. So before I start my remarks, I really have to thank uh, a bunch of people, and I know folks have been thanked, but you honestly, when it comes to things like this in a neighborhood like Little Village, I am a daughter of Little Village. This is, this is my home. This is my neighborhood. This is the place where I still live and I love and breathe and do everything that I possibly can. Um, and honestly, the, this investment is a sort of a love letter for me to my neighborhood. Um, and the reason for that is when you grow up in a neighborhood that lacks resources and you don't always have the representation that you want to have, and when you're finally in a position where you're able to do something, you try with everything you have to make sure that you get this. So, and again, I didn't get to my position by myself. I never got here by myself. It has literally taken a community to get me where I'm at for us to be able to do this together. So I want to thank Alderman Rodriguez because my brother Mike over here, who was the one that was like, hey, so community members have been talking about this. Um, because this isn't the only investment that we were doing in Little Village. There's others. Um, I want to thank Peter Garza. Because if it wasn't for you pushing and pushing and pushing, and I'm talking about years before even the 2019 capital project um, came about in the state legislature. If it wasn't for you saying we need this, it honestly, we wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for the alumni who also said the same thing over and over again, that we need these investments and the students, if it wasn't for you guys, if it wasn't for the love that you also have for the community and for all of the things that you do, we wouldn't be here. Mayor Lightfoot, thank you for the for for getting us to the finish line. Honestly, um, the, this it warms my heart to be able to do this in collaboration and be able to get this done for a school that so so needed it. Alderman Cardenas, who when I was crying over a bunch of things in Springfield because it was late at night, who said "Echale ganas, keep going, we got to get this done," um, you know, who was also there and Principal Haymonker, thank you. Thank you for keeping us updated and everything that's going, but also thank you for making sure that the school is moving forward and that the students and faculty and staff have everything that they need. To the teachers who have also putting their heart and soul into the students and to, into making sure that our students are getting what, what they need inside the doors. There's so many people to thank and the community members of Little Village who fight so hard and who are always out there and always very vocal but also very much present to make sure that we're fighting for the investments. There's so many people to thank to Governor Pritzker, and most importantly, we haven't mentioned him, but I wanted to give him a shout out, is Senate President Don Harmon, who when I brought this up, when, cause you know, like conversations happen, said, Selena, I got you. And he's the man who really truly made this happen. <laughs> So investing in our students doesn't stop in making sure that teachers have supplies and materials that they need to teach a class. And while it's important, it's only one part of a much larger puzzle as we're seeing here today. Students get the most out of their education when their facilities and staff are well taken care of. Our schools provide opportunities for social and emotional development in addition to academic growth that happens in the classroom. And our facilities must be a reflection of this commitment to fulfilling these social and emotional needs. And to this end, we have to make sure that our students have safe spaces that support their learning and their activities. And honestly, that's one of the reasons why I push so hard to make sure that we got the funding at the state level in the capital project. Because our students deserve nice things. Our communities deserve nice things. They deserve the investments. They deserve the late nights and the negotiations and the fighting over things, you know, in Springfield. They deserve for us to do this work. 
as a legislator, it brings me joy to be able to be here. But as a resident of Little Village, there's so much love in my heart to be here today because it's literally a physical embodiment of this push that we've been doing to ensure that the residents of Little Village have their voices heard. And I'm committed to ensuring that students in every corner of the state, not just Little Village, I love y'all, but I gotta fight for everybody, have the opportunity that we have in this moment, and that's to receive valuable investments that may change the trajectory of their life. I'm so honored to be here today. I, I, I hope that it comes across of how happy and joyous I am for this, but how passionate I am about making sure that our communities get what they need, and it's the resources that we need to make sure that we're actually improving the quality of life. So thank you all. Y muy brevemente en español, soy la senadora estatal Celina Villanueva. Me, es un honor, pero es, es un placer estar aquí, no nomás como la senadora del distrito y, 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 de, de, y mucho del suroeste, sino como una hija de la villita, como residente que vive y se ha creado en esta comunidad. Esta inversión, este proyecto que estamos haciendo es uno de, de varios que se van a hacer aquí en la escuela. Pero esto, honestamente, es algo para mí, es, es un amor profundo a la comunidad de decir que necesitamos estos tipos de inversiones en nuestras comunidades, no, nos, no nomás una vez, you know, de vez en cuando, sino todo el tiempo. Porque nuestra comunidad le ha faltado por muchos años recursos y cuando tenemos a gente que viene de la comunidad, que tiene la pasión de pelear y luchar para la comunidad, es así como tenemos inversiones, tenemos proyectos como este para crear espacios seguros para nuestros hijos, para la comunidad entera. Es un placer estar aquí con tanta gente que lo ha hecho, porque yo no lo hice sola. Fui una de, de varias personas que, que durante varios años hemos estado tratando de luchar para de seguir con los recursos para hacer este proyecto lo que es ahorita. So, es un placer trabajar todo en comunidad y estar aquí presente y ya estamos listos para, para hacer lo que tenemos que hacer. Pero antes de eso, quiero introducir, and before that, I want to introduce my very good friend and my brother in this fight and making sure that the, the voices of our communities are heard, Matt DeMatteo from New Life Centers. Morning, everybody. Well, welcome to uh, Farragut, and I'm excited to be here this morning in a different lens today uh, because my son will be starting here as a freshman in the fall. And so I joked with him this morning, I was getting ready, I said, hey, this is the signing bonus for joining a new high school, <laughs> that they heard you were coming and we're building a brand new field, air conditioning, I mean, roof, everything. He laughed. Uh, but my wife, Sarah, is here as well, and we've uh, really thought through where to send Ben. And uh, I'm super proud to be sending him locally here to Farragut High School. As we, we know, I'm, I was talking with Benny this morning, and Benny Estrada uh, came here to Farragut, has been a, a man, a leader in this community, have loved this community. And it was probably about 14 years ago that we ran summer softball on this field. And I want you to just envision right here, home plate was the sewer cap. We ran two fields, one right here playing that way, one in the other corner playing this way. Every time when the balls and field would bump into each other, but this is what we had. And we made the best with what we had. We worked hard with Katia, Cesar, and Lasse. And a few years in, we added new lights to this area. And so we, I remember having another ceremony where we uh, partnered with Comet and others, and we installed new lights in here because there were early times in the field, in the in plane, we'd pull cars up to here, we turn the lights on at about eight o'clock because you couldn't see. And so I want you to envision a place where, man, so much has happened, so much has been going on for decades, and now we're going to continue to upgrade these spaces because our kids deserve the best. So I'm officially honored to be upgrading from community partner to uh, parent, Ms. Hamaker, Mr. Goninas, and, and entire Farragut family. We will be here to walk with you, to encourage you, and man, talk about a big year for Farragut High School. 
So a big thank you to um, a big thank you to all of the leadership here. I've lived and served here for 22 years. I live a few blocks from here. And in a neighborhood with the most youth in the entire city of Chicago and some of the least amount of green space, projects like this are a game changer. Just over a year ago, Adam Toledo lost his life right here at this site. And on your way out, I want you to turn and, and look at the spot because we had a mural installed and on that mural it says, we need each other. And I think, George, you said it best, this, this unity, this politics of unity and coming together. We truly believe that we're stronger together. We need each other. And a space like this, where such a tragedy has happened, and unfortunately, just four months ago, we buried eight-year-old Melissa Ortega. Our community has been plagued by violence. 60623 has battled COVID-19. But I want you to know that coming together, working together, building together, we can heal together. And so coming out of this, I'm excited, I'm hopeful, I'm energized to continue to do the work. For those of you who are in the work, I know you're tired, I'm tired, but keep going. Let's keep going, because we, man, we have such hope ahead of us. And to all the young people right here, I'm excited to be out here to see who's gonna score the first goal. I'm excited to come out here to see the football practices. I'm excited to come out here, play catch with my son, Ben. I'm excited to see this space come alive because we can truly heal together as a city. And so everybody who needs to be thanked has been thanked. I won't go down the list, uh, but I do want to say thank you to all who were involved in this project. I'm excited to see it come to life. And since they gave me the last spot, I'm gonna pull a little bit of an audible, an audible if it's okay with you all. I'm gonna ask uh, everybody to stand up. And because I'm a pastor, this is what I do. I promise I won't pass the plate. But I want, us to, I want us to pray over this site. Because our city needs peace. Our city needs hope. Our city needs love. Our city needs unity. And so I'm going to uh, close our time before we get to the shovels and the photo op uh, in a prayer for peace and dedication of this field. Does that sound good? Let's do it. God, we come before you and we thank you so much for this space. This space represents years of history for many students here. This space represents uh, hope and healing and man, thousands of hours of work that have come together from community leaders, nonprofits, churches, politicians, school leaders, teachers, partners, friends, and neighbors. And so we commit this field to you. We dedicate it this morning. We pray a protection of peace over this space. We pray that children will be able to laugh and play and grow here freely. We pray for peace in the city of Chicago. We pray for the violence to stop. We pray for hope and healing to blossom across our city. And we just wanna come and say thank you. And so we dedicate this field to the city, to the neighborhood, and pray for peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I think we are heading to the shovels, yes? All right. So we can head to the front. I'm going to ask everyone if they can take their seat, please. We're going to start the Q&A session with the mayor. All right, here we go. All right, Mayor, we're going to kick it off with uh, Craig Wall. Two questions for reporters. Go ahead, Craig. Uh, good morning, Mayor. Good morning. Um, kind of wanted to follow up some of the, uh, the the violence plan you talked about yesterday. Last night up in Lincoln Park, uh, there was 
about 400 people were told who gathered, raising some serious concerns about resources being pulled from that area to deal with the very real problem downtown. Uh, and there were three hour wait times for 911 calls for burglaries in progress, shots fired. <coughs> How are you going to balance dealing with issues, but also not leaving residents in other parts of the city feeling like they are at risk? Well, look, um, it is, it's all about balance and making sure that we follow the data, um, that we um, are uh, proactive and, and not reactive, um, and allocating the resources uh, really where they're needed most. We're never going to leave any neighborhood uh, without the resources they need, but obviously when an unexpected event happens, um, resources are going to be stressed, and we've seen that from time to time um, over many years, um, but we want to make sure that particularly in this time uh, where residents are feeling um, really uh, challenged by uh, safety issues, uh, that we're being as responsive as we possibly can. But it is, you know, again, it's got to boil down to being proactive, making sure that uh, we follow the data, understanding what activities are happening where, and then having uh, sufficient resources on the grounds in those particular areas uh, so that we can respond to uh, whatever it is that's happening on the ground. We're hearing reports that on Saturday night, the deputy chief on scene had issued a mass arrest order mm -hmm. that obviously couldn't happen. Have you uh, given orders to the police department that that is not going to happen if there are issues downtown? Because uh, <clears throat> really how are you going to enforce this if we do have kids who are violating, you know, the orders not to be down there? Well, I, I don't. Um, micromanage the day-to-day -day work of the police de department. They're the experts. They're on the ground. They're seeing what the uh, circumstances are. Obviously, there are some uh, serious issues of deployment. I'm brought into uh, the loop to um, confer with the superintendent, but the decision to issue a mass arrest order or not, we've got to be able to rely upon the experienced uh, uh, commanders and deputy chiefs um, and the chief of the patrol to be able to manage and make those decisions um, on the ground. That's not um, I don't think that's an appropriate role uh, for me. But look, the bottom line is no one's goal is to lock up our children. That's not our goal. Our goal is to make sure that we create public spaces like this one where children and families can enjoy themselves in safety and peace. And making sure that we're continuing the work that started yesterday um, through CPS of really educating our young people and their parents about what the responsibilities um, that we all have of residents uh, in the city to uh, conduct ourselves with decency and with respect. But that's the goal. It's not to roll up the paddy wagons and, and lock up uh, a bunch of young people. That accomplishes very little. It may put down the immediate concern, but it doesn't help in the long term. And frankly, it's not teaching our young people the necessary lessons that need to be taught. Now, to be clear, if young people are there and they are violating the law, then we're not going to hesitate uh, to take action. But in the first instance, we want to educate them into compliance um, so that they learn how to be responsible adults. Thanks a lot, Mayor Collin. Block Club. Hey there. Uh, good Hi there. morning. Um, so a question from our editors back in the newsroom. So when Washington, D.C. pushed its curfew for minors from midnight to 11 p.m., gun violence increased. How is Chicago's curfew any different, and what will the city do to prevent such an increase? Well, look, what I said before holds. It's not just about changing um, the uh, curfew from uh, uh, 10 to uh, from 11 to 10. It's about doing a full court press on educating our young people and parents. I'm hearing from many parents, they had no idea that there was a curfew, even though there's been one in existence since 1992. So I think most of the kids who have gathered in these spaces are law abiding. Um, they're looking for fun. They're looking for re-engagement um, with other young people after uh, two years of real difficulty and isolation. Uh, but in the first instance, it can't just be one thing that we do. It's got to be that and. And the and is education, outreach, and encouragement uh, to get our young people to also understand that there are great, fun, productive activities all over the city, hundreds um, every week. I don't want to steal the thunder of tomorrow's announcement, but My Shy, My Future is going to put at their fingertips an array of opportunities that are specific uh, to their location. Uh, that they can follow their passions in their out-of-school times right in their neighborhoods every single day of the week. And just to follow up again, um, 
you said you didn't want to roll up with Patty Baggins and the Redskins. How will the Millennium Park um, curfew be enforced? Well, again, it's not a curfew at Millennium Park. It's a restriction on hours for unaccompanied um, juveniles, and that's an important distinction. I don't want to conflate uh, the two. <clears throat> our goal <clears throat> is that our young people enjoy <clears throat> the public spaces in our city, um, like every other uh, person in our city, but do it respectfully and peacefully. And we just know, um, having um, really, frankly, exhausted a lot of other options, uh, where Millennium Park has become a gathering place, but also a flashpoint, we can't allow any public space to be turned into a place of chaos and violence. And so um, making sure that unaccompanied uh, juveniles have the opportunity to enjoy the space, but to enjoy it with an adult who's going to be responsible for their behavior, I think is a good first step. We want to move in a limited but tar targeted and surgical way and not just paint all young people all across the city uh, with a broad brush and saying uh, off limits. That's not what we're, we're saying. We're saying limited access to unaccompanied minors after 6 p.m. Thanks a lot, Mayor. Let's wrap, everyone. Have a Thank great you. one. Thank <clears> you. <throat>